If Mathis and his team had said Earth Overshoot Day was the 22nd of December, not the 22nd of August, what we would all know is we just need to do business as usual a little bit better. Because if you're only missing by nine days, you just need to improve a little bit out of 365. But that's not the story. The evidence says the 22nd of August. And as we heard last year, it was the 29th of July. Unfortunately, it's moved in the right direction for the wrong reason. That means, because that's the combination of everything humanity does, all of humanity and every organisation uh, that exists needs to do business as unusual. That needs to become everything we do. And I've got a test for this, which I'll apply to SEPA, which is you need to surprise the people you work with. So let me explain how that will work. If we go to a business we regulate and say, we are going to vary your permit to make you spend more money on pollution control equipment, that does not surprise them. If we say to them, we are going to prosecute you as long as they have uh, badly polluted, that won't surprise them. We should do those things. That's a critical part of our role. If we go to a business we regulate and say, we want to help you create more jobs, they say what? And we say, the only way you'll create jobs that will last will be if you decarbonize, dematerialize your production. And not just here at your factory, through your whole supply chain. And your whole supply chain will almost certainly be global. But they're surprised. And then we say, but we're not just going to tell you what you need to do. There's a huge problem in environmental improvements through supply chains. That's sometimes the revenue will fall to one business in a supply chain or one sector in a supply chain and the cost will fall somewhere else. So you've got to have an ability through a supply chain to share risk and return. And as your regulator, we have a new tool called and another tool called sector plans where we'll help you do that. That shocks and surprises the businesses we regulate. So a practical example, the whiskey industry, 94% compliance in the last year that the uh, records were done. That's the highest uh, sector for compliance with Scotland's environment protection laws. But they are also looking at way beyond compliance. So they, if you take one example, uh, whiskey is a premium product, uh, very um, impressive bottles, but they're heavy. So there's a fair bit of energy in their production. And there's a fair bit of energy when you ship them around the world, including to the country I come from. So that industry is stepping up and saying, well, how do we work to lightweight the bottles in a way that you keep the premium look so that they will have the same market attraction? That's one of the many innovations that needs to happen right through supply chains around the world. Now, the exciting thing is Scotland, and I know this is an outsider, was one of the heartlands of the industrial revolution, the scientific revolution, the enlightenment, uh, punching way above its weight. We have that opportunity to do that sort of exciting innovation now. So these challenges, as um, has been said, they're exciting, they need to happen. For a regulator, what we will do, and I've just talked to Ian Buchanan earlier before this call about our compliance work and our regulatory work in the next six months, and I put it in these um, perhaps Australian terms, said, right, we're going to check a few thousand people. We're coming out of COVID. We've been doing some compliance checking. We have the ability carefully under the rules to protect our staff and others to get out there more. We've picked the few thousand um, sites that we'll be inspecting. Um, so we'll be checking some people. We've got some uh, compliance and enforcement blitzes we have. So we'll be whacking some people, those people who deserve it. You know, we're at 1.6 planets. We cannot afford to have people who can't even meet the minimum laws. And as a regulator, if they want a whack, we'll give them a whack. And then we will help some people. So we hope to sign another five or six sustainable growth agreements. We already have several in the Leaven with 14 different organisations, uh, the Coal Authority, Fife Council, Diageo, Keep Scotland Beautiful, all those people and organisations trying to make that part of Scotland one of the heartlands of the low carbon industrial revolution that's coming. So there's a huge opportunity for every organisation to create a different future and as I say, I think the test is, if you're not surprising people every day by what you do, you must still be doing business as usual. And business as usual ain't going to get us out of this crisis. It's business as unusual that will create a different and better future.